Uh, we are not live. <laughs> no, no, no. A recorded show today. Had to miss last night's episode. Was feeling completely under the weather. Uh, what the um, scientists would call uh, exhaustion or extreme exhaustion and extreme fatigue. <laughs> Boys and girls, if you're listening, to all of you younger parents out there, you do need to get some rest and you do need to get some sleep. Trust me on this. Trust me. <laughs> or you'll end up like me last night. But we're going to make up last night's episode by a pre-recorded show, and then we'll be back tonight uh, for L after LSU takes on the Georgia Bulldogs in basketball. So a really fun day D doubling up on some action. Got a lot of stuff we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing some pre-recorded shows uh, with some guests, putting them up on YouTube and things like that. Maybe if we're not able to get with a guest uh, during a live show, because when we do go live, it's uh, uh, some, somewhat can be a, a difficult time. Uh, but nevertheless, we'll be doing some more recorded shows, pre-recorded shows. And the only bad thing about that, though, is that you don't get the media or you don't get the, the uh, not the media, the uh, fan interaction there. But that's okay. So we'll continue to do that. So nevertheless, we're making up the episode now in a pre-recorded show. I must admit, I don't like not having the interaction with the fans in the comments. But nevertheless, I guess it's what you get paid to do is to have content, to have talk. So in this pre-recorded show, we will continue, or I will continue to elaborate on some of the things that I'm hearing around LSU football. LSU baseball is right around the corner. Guys, we're only a couple of days away. We're only a couple of days away from the Jay Johnson era. So it's going to be really fun. It's going to be fun to see what the LSU Fighting Tigers can do on the diamond as it's starting to heat up a little bit out here in the bayou. It's going to be fun. Hopefully they, they roll over Maine. I mean, I mean, what's it like negative two in Maine right now, by the way? I mean, can these guys have really even been practicing you know, weather in Maine? Like I could, I'm just going to in Maine, like I'm just going to Google weather. In Maine. Oh, okay. I mean, Portland, Maine, it's, 34 degrees, high today of 37, high tomorrow of 53. So maybe it's not too terribly bad. But are they been out? Have they been outside? At, you know, maybe like an indoor facility? Are they taking live batting practice out there on the field? I don't know. But they're going to get a little bit of a, a rude awakening when they get down to the bayou and the and the it's 72 degrees outside. They're going to be sweating bullets. So it's going to be a fun weekend. And we'll talk some LSU basketball. We'll do the post game tonight uh, for LSU basketball. A must win for LSU as they go up against the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia is kind of struggling, so it, it is a must win. And, yeah, we'll talk some Kim Mulkey tonight, too, and, the, and the, lady, uh, the Lady Tigers as well. So let's do this. Let's get started. Uh, do us a favor. Just because we're not live doesn't mean you can't hit the like and share. We're going to be posting this just to YouTube, so I, I'm hoping to have a lot of you hit the like button. Hit that like, hit the share. Share it all over Facebook, share it all over Twitter, share to Instaface, I mean Instagram. Do us that favor by hitting that like button, hit the share. Don't forget to subscribe as well. We would greatly appreciate it. I did get a comment, though, uh, the other day, I think from a guy by the name of Brian, who said he was claustrophobic watching the show. Well, Brian, let me tell you this. The new AYS studio is coming very, very soon. We'll be doing a lot more uh, with AYS. So, nevertheless, you could still do us a favor by hitting that like button, hitting the share, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on RU Series Sports Network on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, AYS Sports. Don't forget to rate and subscribe wherever you're listening to this on the audio podcast. We will be uploading the audio to the audio podcast platform, so it'll be really fun. So let's do this as all, we always do. Let's pay some bills around this thing, and then we'll get started. None better than our good friends over at GM Barno and Sons and BetOnline.ag. 
Guys with over 65 years of experience, nobody is better equipped to service in your vehicle than GM, Varno, and Sons. RV repair, big rig overhauls, motorhome chassis, routine maintenance, tire rotations, tire sales. No job is too big or too small over at GM. Give them a call today at 225-664-9992. That's 225-664-9992. And tell them your good friend, Mr. Blake Rafino, over at AYS sent you on by. Guys, I can't. I tell you this all the time, but if even if you're broken down on the side of the road uh, in the greater Baton Rouge area, they are coming to get you. Myself, along with my wife, had some vehicle issues not too long ago, and they're right there for us at every step of the way. Again, that's GM Varno and Sons, GM Varno and Sons. They're good friends over at betonline.ag. Guys, football season is over with, but basketball season and baseball season is full stream ahead. Not just stream, but even full steam ahead. From all the latest odds, total points, player performances, and props, who's going to be the next hired or fired coach, hired coach, they have it all. Head over to the website today, use your mobile device, and sign up by using the code and the promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to get started today. Again, the code is, the promo code, B-L-E-A-V, 50% off of your first welcome deposit, so you go in there, you deposit $100. They're going to give you 50% of that, so $50. All the sports are covered. Video, casino, po- uh, poker as well. You can use all of that and do all of that on Bet Online. So it's BetOnline.ag. BetOnline.ag. All right, let's get this thing rolling, y'all. Let's get this thing rolling, y'all. <laughs> I don't know why I giggle at that all the time. Like, legitimately have no clue why I giggle at that. But nevertheless, nevertheless, yes, I, you know, I know that this question is going to be uh, asked, Blake, how are you doing? Maybe I should have said that off the beginning, too. Mm. Last night, guys, I was just extremely exhausted, have what the doctors call extreme fatigue, showed all the classic signs of it, but we're okay. We're here. We're doing a pre record show early, early this morning, doing the pre record show. We'll probably uh, post it. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe around 1, 1.30, 2 o'clock. Nevertheless, uh, I'm all good. We'll be back uh, tonight. So, look, if you missed it the, in the last episode, I talked about Brian Kelly and the offense and the offensive scheme that LSU is, is evolving around. But I want to even go a little bit deeper into that. Now, Brian Kelly and LSU is not done in the transfer portal. And there's a couple of guys that LSU has their sight, sights on. You know, the kid from Vanderbilt, the offensive lineman, Tyler Steen, Who's out there? A couple of tight ends that they're they're keeping their eyes on. Even though people argue me this or argue with me on this all the time, there are some quarterback transfers or even some maybe even some potential quarterbacks that are going to be going into the portal that they're keeping their eyes on. But nevertheless, I do want to break out break down some more things with Brian Kelly, especially when it comes to offensive line, especially when it comes to the offensive line. Now, you know, I have been labeled. And maybe even rightfully so, labeled an offensive line homer and a, a guy that defends the offensive line too much. And, and maybe I understand that, but I, I do want to say this and tied into LSU and Brian Kelly. Did you see? I mean, I know that you most of you guys saw and girls. Did you see how bad the Bengals' offensive line was? Now I know, I know that the Rams' defensive line was really good. Aaron Donald might be the best overall player in the NFL when you when it's all said and done over maybe the last five, six, seven years, whatever you want to label them as. Um, and it's also kind of interesting to me that the two best teams that won either the Super Bowl or the national championship football-wise have the, had the better defensive lines, but that's something that, you know, I'm going to be keeping my eyes on. But the one thing – when we look at the Bengals' offensive line and how bad that they were, and we look at Brian Kelly and what he's come in and really done. Guys, when you have guys like Miles Frazier, the, the freshman All-American, you have Traymond Shorts, and let's just say for whatever reason, LSU is able to pull off Tyler Stink. Now, I'm not 100% sure if they're going to be able to pull it off or not, but regardless, they are bringing him in. They're trying to get him to come to LSU would be a complete revamp of what LSU is doing up front on the offensive line. And, it, you know, as much as people talk about Brian Kelly and what he was at Notre Dame, for all intents and purposes over the really his tenure, 
they had some really good offensive lines, maybe even great offensive lines. But what they weren't able to do is have the talent at Notre Dame on the outside and at running back, and let's just call it what a spade a spade is, even at quarterback, that Brian Kelly is going to be able to have at LSU. Now, yes, the competition is going to be bigger. Yes, the competition is going to be greater. And the coaching is going to be better in the SEC for Brian Kelly. But the interesting thought and process for me is, is, is Brian Kelly in a situation that he's never been in? You know, we talk about how Notre Dame's a blue blood and how they have all this prestigious and prestige around their program. But I keep looking at guys like, like Kayshawn Booty. And I keep looking at guys like Walker Howard that's just coming in. Will Campbell. Now, Will Campbell might be an outlier for a Brian Kelly type of situation because of how good they did on the offensive line. But a Malik Neighbors, a Jack Besh, a Corey Connor, a Noah Kane, whatever you want to talk about or label at from a skill position point. You know, the interesting thought that we're going to have to monitor about this is, this, does Brian Kelly look at this situation at LSU and say, well, you know what? We're going to do everything we can, and I'm going to be along with the hip and tied with the hip with LSU offensive line coach Brad Davis, and we're going to go after guys like Miles Frazier. We're going to go after guys like Traymond Shorts. We're going to go after guys who have a lot of SEC experience like uh, 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 the, St the Steel kid from Vandy, Tyler, St uh, Tyler Steen, excuse me, not Steel, Tyler Steen kid from Vandy. So what happens when and if, well, we know two of the three, but Brian Kelly brings Tyler Steen in and you have a completely revamped offensive line. Now, I'm assuming you're going to have some guys transfer, but you also have a lot of talent that's along the offensive line that we saw for a season ago that did really well. You also have guys like Anthony Bradford and Cam Wire returning. Garrett Dellinger saw a lot of snaps. So when we look at all of this, when we look at the offensive line that Brian Kelly has been known for and how he's already revamping that position group, when we look at the wide receivers with Kayshawn Boutine, Malik Neighbors, Chris Hilton, Brian Thomas Jr., et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, Jack Besh, LSU, in my opinion, could be offensively two positions away from really making and doing some damage. Now, I understand that um, – and, and let me make one more point before I get to, 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 to those two positions. Guys, you're already right now going to have a better offensive line than you did a season ago. And some people will label it, well, Blake, no, I mean, you can't, you, you can't get much worse. Well, yes, you can. You could get much worse than what LSU was doing last season. Guys, there was a point in the last half part of the season that LSU and, and guys like Ty Davis Price were rushing for over 125 to 130 yards per game. Think about that for a second. In the SEC, the offensive line did some good things to LSU. And you know what's even more funny about that is we, we, we talk about guys like Max Johnson, and we talk about how he held on to the ball too long. Well, you can't hold on to the ball too long if you don't have time. But they're going to be a lot better. A lot better. Whether it be Miles Frazier at left tackle, Anthony Bradford at left guard, maybe a Marlon Martinez, Garrick Dellinger at center, at a right guard, you have someone like Traymond Shorts or Cardell Thomas fighting it out. Can Emory Jones, the, the very talented true freshman, come in and, and push for a starting position? And then if you get Tyler Steen, it could he come in with all of that experience and start at right tackle? Now, the one concern that I would have would be the co cohesion and the communication between those guys. But when you have talent along the offensive line and guys that have that much experience, cohesion can come much quicker with that much experience along the offensive line. Guys, if you have Traymond Shorts and, and Tyler Steen on the right side of the offensive line, they can commute, they could get on the same page very quickly. Very, very, very quickly. Because there's nothing that they're going to be that's going to be thrown at them that they haven't already seen. It's like the Austin Dacula situation a season ago 
when he's not giving up a, a sack the entire season, you know why he's doing stuff like that. It's not necessarily all athletic ability. It also has to do with how many starts he's had in college football. I would almost make an argument and a bet that a guy like Austin Deculus can get drafted just based off the starts and experience that he has. He sure as hell is going to get a camp invite because there's nothing that's going to go on that he hasn't seen already. So which leads me to this, and we'll continue to break down the offense and, you know, spring being about uh, the, the start of spring practice being around and starting around a month from now. But an interesting thing for me is, is I think you do have a, a lot of really good pieces. Now, we talk about six and six and seven and five and eight and four. For me, for me, I think that you sit at that position because of the because of two positions. Number one, I'll just go with tight end and we'll we'll do quarterback last because I feel as if with all the comments and everything about going live, maybe in a pre-recorded show, I can break it down and talk about it without having to answer all the questions and having, you know, a 285 comments being unread. But tight end being one of them. Guys, you're going to you're going to have a situation where it's third and one, third and two, game is on the line and you're going to have to bring a guy in that maybe not be an offensive lineman, but that can go in there and 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 seal a defensive end. Get a little bit of push on an outside linebacker. You don't want to have a situation where you're rotating offensive linemen in in a big boy package and you can't run a play action. Now, can Mike Denbrock, who is your offensive coordinator, maybe revamp and, and do some things to help a guy like Cole Taylor out? Cole Taylor has the size. He has the size. Quite honestly, I think he's going to need to put on more weight. And maybe not even more weight, but he needs to get a little bit more defined. Put on some muscle. Maybe trim off some fat. But outside of Cole Taylor, yeah, you have a guy like Jack Mashburn, but is he someone that Brian Kelly's going to want to religiously run out there? Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. So I think in that position, LSU's going to have to bring somebody else in, not even for a, a position problem or maybe not even a, an athletic or an athleticism type of situation, but strictly off of depth because I don't know if Mason Taylor can – as, as talented as he is at catching the football, I don't know if it's a third and two situation if he's going to be running out there trying to block guys like Will Anderson from Alabama. But we'll see. Okay. So I guess now moment of truth. And let me first off by saying that I think that when you look at everything offensively and then you look at the quarterback position, let me start off by saying, LSU has a lot of talent there. Well, Blake, in the day and age when you have three scholarship quarterbacks, you're sitting pretty good. I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you. But you don't you have a lot of question marks at that position? I feel as if that what I say gets mislabeled and gets mis, uh, misconstrued, right? When I talk about LSU in this quarterback position, in this quarterback room, let me first off by saying this. I think Miles Brennan is a really good quarterback. I think he's got a lot of big-time skill sets. I don't know if there's a lot of people, a lot of human being on planet Earth that can throw a football like he can from a velocity standpoint at least. He's got a big arm. But a lot of and even people call him a really good arm talent. I don't disagree. I don't disagree in the slightest. The issue for me and what can will continue to be for me even when we go into spring and we need to see what goes on here. Guys, he's missed the last 21 games this year. And for all of those and for all of the fans and the people that think that he can come in here and you don't have question marks around that position and not even just question marks, serious question marks, 
you're either you either had the glasses, the purple and gold glasses, and look, I'm wearing an LSU hat and an LSU shirt. I put the glasses on sometimes maybe a little too much. But do you have your purple and gold glasses on? Do or are you saying things like, and this is every night in my comments, so I'm not trying, I'm not pointing out one specific person. Just go look at all the comments. I'm running with Miles Brennan to the end of, to the finish line. I'm with him. I am too. I don't disagree with you there. Not in the slightest. Not even close. I guys, if Miles Brennan runs out here next season and throws for four thousand yards and thirty touchdowns, you're more than likely going nine and three. You know how I know that. Because I look at Max Johnson, who didn't throw for 4,000 yards and threw for 27 touchdowns, and you're 6-6. Six and six. Do, you, do you win three more of those games? Do you beat Auburn? Do you beat Arkansas? Can you beat UCLA? Can you beat Alabama when you have them on the ropes? Yes, you can. That is... The diversity and the expanded part of you getting beat by that big of a margin starts to slim, and you start winning those games. I hope Miles can come in there and do it. That that that's not anywhere close, uh, or even a thought of what I'm thinking or saying. He's got to stay healthy. If everybody wants to argue with me on that, that's fine. The other argument is this. To say that you think that he can come in and do good things is one thing based off of the three games that he played. I don't disagree with that. 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, now going into 2022. Guys, there's only one season where Miles Brennan did not miss games due to injury, that being 2019, because he didn't see that that many snaps. Am I cautious? Yes. Am I optimistic that he can get it done? Some parts, yes. Do we all need to take a step back and see if he can lead this team? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to Garrett. De- uh, let's go to Garrett Nussmeyer. After everything that's played out this season or last season, Arkansas red shirting, not playing in a bowl game, things that we saw with Garrett uh, Garrett Nussmeyer, guys. At the current moment, the current moment, he's not ready. Hiya. Mosquito. He's not ready. Can he? Can Joe Sloan, the new quarterbacks coach, <laughs> if you're listening to the audio podcast, somehow, some way, we have a mosquito in here. Now I'll tell you, we for all of you who don't know, we do have a. Uh, we did renovate our house and our studio, so sometimes these creak, these cracks and crevices, um. We have unwanted friends, and I guess because of the lighting, they like the light, whatever. He's going to have to take a – getting back to Garrett Nussmeyer, he's going to have to take a big step forward, a very big step forward. There's nothing wrong with checking the ball down. There's nothing wrong with rolling with the play that you have already. You don't have to hit the bazooka and the home run every play. If you hit singles and doubles all the way down the field, you're going to score. Now, let me tie in this too. Walker Howard is is the most talented when it comes from footwork, when it comes to speed, when it comes to arm, when it comes to maybe even knowledge to some extent. Probably the most gifted quarterback in that room. It's not a slight at everybody. He's more talented than you are. He might not have the big, a bigger arm than Miles Brennan. 
he might not have that kind of gunslinger mentality like Garrett Nussmeyer. But a kid that runs a 4-5-40, not hand time either, by the way, laser time, and does what that kid can do, he's the most talented guy on the, on the team. Now, do I want to see him run out there as a freshman and play significant snaps? Not really. Not really. I wouldn't mind him sitting behind either Nussmeyer or uh, uh, Brennan. Hopefully, it will be Brennan. Let him get his bearings underneath him. But when we're talking about this specific season, coming off a of thumb surgery for Walker Howard, coming off a, 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 a broken leg, needing some procedures and some little things done there, guys, you are you do have a lot of question marks at quarterback. If you cannot look through that, then that's on you. And I don't mean that in a wrong way. But I think that we have to have that serious conversation. Again, you're going to hear what you want to hear. And you're going to think what you want to think. I really don't want to see the statistics of Miles Brennan. I don't want to see, I don't want to hear about the gunslinger mentality of Garrett Nussmeyer. I honestly don't want to hear about the potential of Walker Howard. Because guys, now we're here. Spring is right around the corner. As people would say, it's about to hit the fan. I know we can continue to have this conversation, and I know that I'm in the minority of this conversation. Trust me, the DMs that I get on a daily basis tell me so. They tell me so. Anyway, speaking of quarterbacks, Al Landry tagged me in this while we were recording it. He says 2023's number one quarterback, Arch Manning, is not down to two schools. His father, Cooper, told 247's Steve Wilfong, Alabama, Georgia, Ole Miss, Texas, Florida, and LSU are all in the mix. Yeah, um, yeah, you're right. He's not down to two schools. He's down to wherever David Cutcliffe is going. <laughs> Can we can we can we acknowledge that? Is it a, is it about to be a bidding war for Cutcliffe for the deity, as my good friend Bill King would say? Oh, and by the way, if you listen to us on the Bill King show this morning, the towers went down where I was at, so that was the issue there. But in reference to this LSU team offensively, you're a quarterback away. John Emery, Noah Kane, Corey Connor, Amari Goodwin, Trey Bradford, Josh Williams. You got talent all across the place. But if you want to talk about Mississippi State, if you want to talk about Vanderbilt, if you want to talk about Missouri in 2020 for Miles Brennan, I want to talk about the 21, the, the last 21 games he's missed. I don't want to hear about freak injuries. Question that I will get in these comments, Blake, do you think LSU should or could or would go after a transfer quarterback? I have a debate with my good friend Stan on this all the time. I love Stan to death. And quite honestly, I run to my good buddy Stan a lot, a lot about a lot of things. He is like the you, – you, you guys know the – um. you remember this. You'd watch a TV show and you got the angel on one side and the devil on the other. Well, I'm always the devil on one trying to convince myself of stuff uh, of stuff sometimes. Maybe I'm not the devil, maybe the the other part of me. But but my good buddy Stan Polky, he's the he's the uh the one that I turn to because sometimes and you guys know this, I'm an emotional human being. Very highly emotional dude. Uh and me and him have and I run to him and I talk to him about things cuz I think that his football and baseball mind are one of the best around. And what, what you know, me and him debate this all the time. To that question, I think LSU should kick the tires on every quarterback that goes in the portal. JT Daniels, kick the tires. If you like him, great. If you don't, don't. If he's two miles Brennan, Brennan-ish for you with the entries, sounds good. Move on. It's going to be somebody after spring that goes into the portal. I don't trust at all. And read what I'm telling you here. I don't trust at all that LSU goes into the beginning of the season with, a, with all three of these quarterbacks. 
Today's date being 12-16 of 2022, maybe I should bookmark this episode. I don't trust it. Okay. We got some LSU basketball and baseball stuff to talk about, but we do got to get to a very, very quick break. Got to talk about my our good friends over at NordVPN. What's more important than a peace of mind? Absolutely nothing. And that is what NordVPN is here to do for you, is give you that peace of mind while you're online. Guys, you know how much struggles we had been having with the stream since Hurricane Ida happened. We switch over to NordVPN. Look how good it's been doing. Plus, you can use NordVPN on all of your computers and your devices, no matter the operating system. No matter if I'm in the living room setting up the AYS stream on my laptop or I'm in here in the studio, everything runs through NordVPN. So grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by using the NordVPN.com slash believe promo code. That's B-L-E-A-V to get set up today, 70% off your first NordVPN plan by using that promo code believe. Again, B-L-E-A-V, NordVPN. And our good friend Carol Falls over at State Farm. Guys, I've been telling you about Carol for such a long time now. Sponsored. Our YouTube $300 gift card giveaway, which we will be announcing this Thursday, tomorrow. You might know our good friend, Carol Foss, over at State Farm, but did you know how great his service and all the things that he's doing over State Farm is? Call Carol Foss today at 985-395-4300, 985-395-4300 for all the great rates on home, on auto, home, and life insurances like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. And our good friends over at the Drake Williams Law Firm, drakewilliamslawfirm.com, 985-386-7600, 985-386-7600. Guys, all the great deals that I've been telling you about. One AYS listener, talk to Ryan Williams today. One AYS listener went over to the Drake Williams Law Firm, had some situations going on. He didn't tell me who it was, but hopefully one, one day we'll know. But they were felt so at home using the Drake Williams Law Firm. They're able to work some things out, able to have a peace of mind, talking about a peace of mind. That is what the Drake Williams Law Firm did for them when they called. Again, it's 985-386-7600. Tell me good friend Blake Rafino at AYS sent you on by. Okay, let's see. I keep getting these uh, – I keep getting these Twitter updates. Um – Okay. So let, let me say this. Um, it does look like, as we're recording this, getting a text, it looks like Blake Money is going to be starting on Friday, talking about some LSU baseball and the big weekend that they will have uh, this weekend. It looks like Blake Money will start Friday. Man, that, how incredibly great does Blake Money look? Lost a lot of weight. Um, maybe in doing that, getting in better shape and condition, to be able to go deeper into games than he did last season. You remember he would come in two or three, two innings. After two innings, man, he would fall off the table. Fastball would go from about 95, 96 to like 92. It just was not in the best of shape. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, sometimes guys are, aren't are built for that, but it looks like he's going to be a starter um, this Friday night. It looks like Mikel Hilliard will start Saturday. And it looks like it's up in the air for Sunday. So we'll keep you in we'll keep you uh, in the loop on what we're hearing um, around LSU baseball very quickly, and then we'll get to basketball, and then we'll get we'll get on out of here. Um, I'm very excited to, to for this weekend. Like I don't know, huh. I. Don't know if I can remember. Now, I'm always excited for baseball season, y'all. Always excited for baseball season. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, I don't know if I've been more excited about a start of a season because of the unknown that I've been in a long time. Because you always kind of knew what you were getting with Paul. Now, the players change, but... And that's fine. But you always had that same feel of what his teams and how his teams were going to be built, be constructed. You know, when you 
have a guy like Alex Bregman that comes in? What does Bregman look like? You know, so many talented players, but you want to see the player. I'm just really excited to see what the entire team looks like. What does Blake Money do with a new pitching staff and new conditioning? What do they do at the plate? Is Gavin Dugas going to hit ninth in the lineup? You have a, a close to a 20 home run guy hitting ninth in the lineup. You know, we're going to have to bring our good friend Zach Pearson back on the on the show. Because we talk about that at nauseum. You know, one thing I asked fans yesterday, let me just go to Facebook very quickly, because I asked a very specific question. What are you the most excited about when it comes to um LSU baseball and the majority of the comments, which is so kind of it's kind of funny to me, honestly. Um, actually, extremely funny when I ask, "What are you most excited about?" When we talk about LSU baseball, and I have all these comments that flowed in from baseball, I mean from Facebook and Twitter. Most of them said great pitching. P- Allison Driscoll says pitching. Wade says pitching. Patrick says pitching, pitching, pitching. But I keep going down these comments. I want Gorilla Ball to be back, Blake. Where's the Gorilla Ball at? Where's the doubles, the triples, and the home runs? What in the Rudy Pooh's been going on under Maneri? They can't hit worth a shit. That's literally the comments. Then I stroll all over to... uh, to LSU baseball stats, because me and Zach had this conversation, and I, I, me and Zach were like, bro, what are they talking, what are people talking about Gorilla Ball? Like, what are you even talking about? And I get what they're trying to mean, but then I look up the LSU home runs for a season ago and look at, looked at it and see that it's 93, and you have times throughout the season that LSU led, led. For the country in home runs. They got to get better at at hitting in the 7th, 8th, and ninth hole. I'm not talking about that. But, man, come on. Now, they struggled at times. Sure. Absolutely. I'm not saying that. Now, you add guys like Jacob Berry. You got uh, Gavin Dugas back. You got Kay Doty back. You got Dylan Cruz, potentially the number one overall pick in the entire country when he comes out on your team. So, yeah. I want Gorilla Ball, Black Blake. Reminds me, when people say that, reminds me of the, uh, reminds me of the very, um, how, what do, I, do you guys look at TikTok and there's this like big thing on TikTok right now? I want my mommy. And then people are like, I want your mommy too. It's like, I want Gorilla Ball. Well, at this point, bro, you got it. <laughs> I mean, you got a lot of guys that can hit in this lineup. But we'll see. I, I want to tamper my expectations because it is a first-year head coach. It is a first-year – Um, it is a new regime. So we'll see. Um, getting over again, we'll do, we'll talk a lot of basketball tonight. So I don't want to spend, spend too much time on this and the pre-recorded show. And, the, and then we'll get on out of here. Um, but LSU faces off with Georgia tonight. And I, I gotta say this, um, yeah, you can't lose to Georgia, man. You can't lose to Georgia. I don't think LSU is going to lose to Georgia. Georgia is six and nineteen on the season. I, I, <laughs> they're just, it, it, it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. But but LSU's got to find a situation where they win. Uh, I you know it. I keep saying these must win games, and people keep getting on my ass about it. But tonight's game, and to then tomorrow, or, or then Saturday. Against South Carolina, even though it's at South Carolina, are must wins. Because then you got Kentucky, then you got Missouri. Now, Missouri, you know, kind of eh, you know, kind of eh, meh. But then you got Arkansas and Alabama. And guys, you're going to Rupp Arena is tough anyway. You lose that one. 
Then you're going to Fayetteville. You're going to go into Bud Walton Arena. Did you see how electric Bud Walton Arena was against Auburn? Now, I know LSU's not Auburn, but Arkansas is a fan base where when they're winning, they're going to support. They're going to be loud. They're going to be toxic and, and a good kind of toxic in a way, too. Yelling at the players, getting trying to get in Will Wade's head. And then you got Alabama. And until Will Wade beats Nate Oates, guys, it's always going to be a struggle. Always going to be a struggle. Let's take it one game at a time. Go out there tonight, beat the dog, beat the brakes off of Georgia. Get some momentum going. Get some momentum going. Then you go and you turn to South Carolina, and then you know maybe you you get a good win there. But you're gonna have to take you're gonna have to at minimum take, in my opinion, it would be very nice if you take at least two of the three from Kentucky, Arkansas, and Alabama. But what I even one of two, I don't want a situation because you know then you're above 500 in the league. I mean, because what you're you're 500 right now. You get the two wins against Georgia and South Carolina. Then you're two games above 500. <sighs> then if you win at Missouri, but you lose those three against Kentucky, Arkansas, and Alabama, and you're 500 in the league, I mean, man, that that's just rough. And I don't want to go 500. And everybody keeps getting on my ass about Will Wade and me saying things negatively about Will Wade when that's not even necessarily what I'm doing. I'm just saying that, you got <laughs> you you got to be able to critique him. Nevertheless, we'll see tonight. We'll have a lot more uh, for the live show tonight about that, but we'll do, we'll just do that then. All right, I want to end. I want to end it here. But we want to talk about my good friend John Patton over at GMFS Mortgage. GMFS Mortgage dot com. Buying a new home, saving money on the mortgage that you have now, or even doing a cash out refi. The timing has never been better, guys. If you saw, we me and my wife posted on social media. We went over to John. He was there for us every step of the way. Guys, I got to be honest. I feel like me, the the I, I call John the magician, man, because the things that he was able to pull off is absolutely outstanding, and I greatly appreciate him doing what he did for me and my wife and my entire family. Purchase, refinance, build, and renovate. Nobody's better. GMFS Mortgage, they're changing lives. And our good friend Richie Roche over at Roche's Lawn and Landscape, 225-937-7220, 225-937-7220. Let them know that your good friend Blake Rafino sent you on by if you're in the greater Baton Rouge area, outdoor patio spaces, landscaping, need a quick lawn trim, they can do it. Guys, and they're one of the best. Go look up, go look them up on their Facebook page, website, and see how great everyone that they do's yard looks. Rich is going to be doing a lot of our landscaping here in the next couple of weeks. Absolutely fantastic. Again, Richie Roche over at Roche's Lawn and Landscape, 225-937-7220. Tell him Blake sent you on by. All right. We will see y'all again tonight, but just wanted to go out there and let everybody know that we're I am alive. I uh, I was about to sing a song. You know, the other night we sang uh, T-Pain's I'm in Love with a Stripper. Uh, I'm in love. Excuse me. But I was thinking of a good song to sing to end it out here. Oh, staying alive, staying alive, ha, 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 staying alive. That's what we're doing. Thank you for being patient with us. We'll see you all again tonight uh, after the LSU basketball game. Y'all have a good one. Later, guys. See you tonight. Or, or as I should say, peace out, Girl Scouts. <laughs>